Okay, it's good enough. Um, my name is Robert Oppaker, and I'm a silversmith. I'm also a teacher, and I'm here to talk about a uh, vessel that I made uh, called Charybdis. And I, it wasn't originally called Charybdis, but I eventually called it that. Um, and it's, um, it's a large vessel. It fits in sterling silver vessel. It fits in about an 18-inch cube, and it's made out of uh, sterling silver sheets. Um, a lot of my ideas come from drawings that I do uh, during on church bulletins, um, <laughs> wherever. Um, it's it, the sort of an inspiration when you're in a church setting and it's just that wonderful time where nobody is demanding other things of you. I find that a lot of interesting juices flow, and a lot of my sketches originally appear on these church bulletins. Um, these are some steps um, in making a vessel such as that. Uh, these vessels are made out of maybe about a hundred pieces of separate sheets of metal that are hand formed. Um, in the upper corner right here, you can see I've got a template. And here's where I've cut the metal, and I'm actually forming it in wooden uh, form right here. This is another template sheet. Uh, this is further along, a lot of template making, a lot of um, uh, paper templates here. This is a bronze um, section that's going to become part of the center of the vessel. Um, and here's the silver version of it, cut from it. This is a 6 inches by 36 inch long piece for the center. And it's, it's all sheet metal. It's about 40 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's relatively thin. Here's uh, forming uh, in various stages, uh, especially good, good to see right here. This one right here, that's a piece of metal that's a flat sheet that's been just curved. Now what I'm doing is I'm uh, crimping the edge so that I can create more of a volume so it's not just a flat sheet that's curved, it's actually has, you know, curving more than one dimension. And here it's been kind of hammered out, um, still working on that same piece, that same element to the vessel, more crimping. And here's where that final piece is all nicely formed, nice, beautiful, kind of really lush, uh, shape. You can't do that unless you use a lot of hammering, a lot of uh, planishing over steel stakes to get the to get the metal to actually kind of have a volume to it. Um, and that's another element. Of them. Now, when I'm working on these things, since it's a three-dimensional object and you have this initial sketch that you came up with, the, th the sketch doesn't mean anything until, until it becomes three-dimensional. So I have to start um, putting pieces together. This is upside down. I'm kind of envisioning what the lip is and the base are in relation and what is going to happen in the center. Now here's the center areas. Um, here's that uh, sort of coiled uh, piece that I was working on before. Uh, looking down onto the vessel. Um, this is the lip right here. That's that coil right there. Um, here's in our sink. So you can see the size of the piece. This is a, a regular kitchen sink right there. And uh, more trying to figure out what this piece is. It's like a three dimensional puzzle. You're trying to fit out, figure out where all these things come into, into play. Um, here's a good piece where you can see the uh, wooden forms that I work into. Um, more kind of trying to figure out what, what it's going to do because you, you have this drawing and, and it's just, it's, you think you know what's happening, but you don't really know what's happening until you start forming the metal. So I form one element and, and that leads to another. Um, so here, this is all the same vessel. It's upside down here. This is the this would be kind of this would become the uh, the lip, um, and this is the center part right here. Um, let's see. Gosh, this goes faster than I thought. The number of slides. <laughs> um, I actually had about like I don't know. <coughs> Janet put these together before, and I had I don't know how many five hundred slides we had picked from. Uh, um, the same piece I'm working on, trying to figure out. Here's fitting a little tiny section in. Um, just to kind of fill up the whole thing, because you, you don't want to have these big gaps in this vessel. I mean, you, you can you can create like a few pieces, but then there are all these like transitional pieces that have to fit in. Um, more fitting. Here's the soldering. This is good to show you how to put it together. Each one of these pieces has to be brazed together. It's a sterling silver, and you melt sterling into the seams, so it all becomes one unit. Um, this is fluxed up to uh, protect from uh, oxygen when you heat it. More fitting of pieces. Those gazillion different pieces being fit together. Um, clean. Here you can see some of the solder that kind of drips along the edge that needs to be cleaned up. Um, it's a big puzzle. It's a big puzzle. And, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to trap the sense of energy when you do it. I mean, it's just a big hunk of metal, but you're trying to capture some spirit that's behind why you want to do this thing. Um, here's a good uh, looking down into the vessel and just a little tiny chunk that I'm going to be putting somewhere in this uh, <laughs> large piece right here. Th these are all forged wires that come along the edge. Um, the finished piece was 170 ounces of silver, uh, argentium sterling. Um, so you can do some math on how much that might cost if you want to figure out what silver is per ounce. Um, here's another detail on the side, more of the fitting, little bits and pieces coming together. Um, when it's all done, the, you want to have the sense that this is not a whole bunch of separate pieces, but it's a unity. So all these pieces relate to each other. 
and somehow come together to create um, something of what the initial sketch was. <laughs> But it'll change. Oh, and here you can see the, the actual vessel is, is, to, vessel is together. Uh, this is the top lip, the base is together, and I've figured out what's going on in the center more. Um, not cleaned up yet. Um, still going to figure out some more pieces over here. And, and trying to capture that same spirit that you had when you were sitting in church doing a sketch, <laughs> which, is, which is a tricky one. Um, once again, a picture of our sink, uh, rinsing it off, upside down. Um, you can see all these separate little components coming together right here. Uh, the naming of these things happens very late in the game. I usually don't come up with a name and say, I'm going to do a piece called Charybdis, you know, the goddess of the whatever. <laughs> I, it just becomes a final thing. Here's in the soldering area, uh, upside down once again. I'm, this is where I'm attaching this all together for, for, towards the end here. Um, I, do it, I often do things upside down because I have to defy gravity. When you flip it over, you want it to look like it's dancing, it's moving. And if you, so you, if you do it upside down as you're building it and then turn it, it actually has its sort of dance. This is completed. Um, it's highly polished. Um, no fire scale on it. Uh, the, the alloy that I'm using is Argentium Sterling, um, which is a new alloy that doesn't get as much fire scale. It's a technical thing. I don't know if you talk about that right now. But when you, when you heat Sterling, it gets sort of a, a blue haze on it. And you have to either remove it or um, try to avoid it. And this is the last shot, another view of it. You can see it's different from every angle. So as you turn it, it's not symmetrical. It's not like a rear bowl where it's just a symmetrical image. It's all kind of a sculptural vessel that moves in space, hopefully. That's it.